Um, hello everyone, welcome to the National Ag Week Farmer Science Sessions. My name is Annie and I'm your host for today. Today we will be hearing from Renee who is a cotton producer and we will be hearing all about life on her cotton farm. Thank you very much Renee, uh, over to you. Hi everyone, my name is Renee. Thank you so much for inviting me along today. It's really exciting to be able to share uh, the farming story with all of the school kids across the country. I'm really excited and I'd just like to start with a little video. Hang on. This is my only fear that we become beautiful people. Some designer clothes, rock and roll with fashion shows. What you do and who do you know? Inside the world of beautiful people. Shine and roll up notes, clean up some broken. So, just a little bit about myself. Um, we've got a small family farm, actually two farms in central Queensland um, on the central highlands on the western irrigation scheme. So we've got an irrigation farm. We've got a full-time employee and during harvest we can often have up to 10 people helping us out uh, during cotton picking and also when we're growing other crops. So some of the things that we do on our farm outside of cotton include um, popcorn, chickpeas, mung beans and wheat. So we grow a mixture of grains, pulses and uh, cotton. And that's really important um, for our biodiversity on farm. So you can see here, um, I've got some chickpeas up the top right hand side. I've got the cotton and there's some wheat that's starting to finish off. And we've just recently harvested wheat and chickpeas, which were our winter crops. And we're heading into our summer cropping program now, which will probably be mung beans. And um, hopefully if it dries out enough, we've just had some really significant rainfalls around 213 millimetres. Um, so I hope to be planting some cotton in the next couple of weeks. So one of the benefits with cotton is it's a genetically engineered crop. So it's fabulous because it's resistant to pests. And we've currently got a really long planting window and that shuts off on the 31st of December. So you can see here um, waterways on the farms. We've got some natural wetlands. We've got some tailwater recycling dams, which is really important part of recycling water on the farm. It's a really precious resource. Um, and so we try and retain as much as we possibly can on the farm and use it really efficiently. And you can see here, I've got some swans and a little baby gosling. Um, I've got some ibis and some other water birds. And it's a really important part of the IPM or what we call integrated pest management strategy that we have on our farm. So birds are really good at catching insects and they look after um, the waterways that we've got here on farm as well. Some other things that I'm really proud to share um, you can see here I've got some beneficial insects, lady beetles, um, really love caterpillar eggs and they love aphids. And I've got down the bottom um, a really large orb weaver spy a spider. They're fabulous at catching pest insects as well. And on the left hand side is a micro bat. They can catch up to one and a half times their own weight in pest insects every single day. So they're really voracious feeders of catching those bad bugs that we may have in the field. So my favourite crop to grow would be cotton. It's also probably the most trickiest crop that we grow. So it's very intensive um, and there's lots of different um, science um, and research that goes into um, growing a crop. Um, right from the planting, we have lots of preparation that we do before we start to plant right through to the harvest period. Here in my valley in the central, um, central Highlands in central Queensland, it's around 150 days to grow the crop. Right from the seed, um, then we plant, we water it up and then it, has, it goes through its growing period. 
So you can see here up the top, we've got a planter. So that's about to happen in the next couple of weeks. I'll be really excited to share that with you. Um, if your mum or dad's on Twitter or if you're on TikTok, it's my favourite thing to do is to share. So after the seed has germinated, you can see here, I've got a couple of pictures of what we call cotyledons. They're the very first um, leaves that come out of the ground. So they can be planted um, at quite a big depth. And you can see here, it's really using all its energy to push through um, and to lift through to that dirt. And after the cotyledons have um, been out in the um, sunshine and been exposed to that uh, photosynthesis, then our first true leaves come through. You can see them here in the bottom picture. And that, that is quite a quick process. So in my region, because we're quite warm and quite humid, that happens within a two or three week period. The crop will continue to grow and put on what we call squares, which is just before they start flowering. And then um, on the left-hand side, we've got what's called a candle flower. So before the square opens up into a flower um, is the candle. And once they've been pollinated, which takes only a 24 hour process, they start to turn that pinkish purplish color. So you can see whether that, um, that flower has been pollinated. Cotton plants are quite unusual um, in that, they're not unusual, are quite um, common in that they're self-pollinating, but they can also be pollinated uh, through cross-pollination from other cotton plants within that field and also through the birds, the bats and the bees that we have in the field. So they can spread the pollen around and um, ensure that they grow beautiful um, big fruit. Now the fruit is what we call the cotton bowl. So this person here in um, the field is my agronomist. They have a really important role to play on the farm. So they come in, they're checking the crop a couple of times a week and their role is to look for different weeds, uh, insects and diseases in the field. And right here, they're um, putting, putting the plant down onto that yellow tarp and they're looking for not only pest insects, but things like how many spiders do I have? How many lady beetles do they have? Because if we have more beneficials on the farm, they will feed on those pest insects. And that's really important to keep a track of both, both those pests and um, those beneficials. Uh, my favourite are the lady beetles and I've got heaps of them at home at the moment. I did a little TikTok on them last week. The lady beetles life cycle um, and they lay eggs in the clumps on the back of the leaves. The larva is what does most of the voracious feeding of the, the pest insects. So they're like the very hungry caterpillar, except they're lady beetle larvae. And they feed on those hundreds of eggs during the day they get really fat and then they turn into a pupae. And once they hatch out of that, then what you see um, in your garden are these lady beetles and we get lots and lots of them in the field. So here we are um, looking for some uh, lady beetles and putting out some beneficial insects. So sometimes we need a little bit of extra help uh, with, with the pest insects, especially if we've got things like your mealybugs. So we actually put out things like green lace wings or lady beetles out in the farm. And that's what I'm doing here, putting out some extra good bugs. So some other pest insects that we get, um, which we really don't like in the field, are things like your aphids. Um, the problem with pest insects is they do spread diseases. So just like you can get the common cold, these aphids can um, spread um, some common diseases through our plants, which can really affect them in the, at the end of the day. And these guys here are mealybugs on the right hand side and up the top left hand side, the furry looking one, which looks very similar, is a cryptolemus lady beetle. Um, and she's actually a native species here to Australia and she very much looks like the pest, uh, which is how she manages to feed on them because she's she's quite um, she hides in amongst all the pest insects and tricks them. And you can see her there, she's feeding on some of those really small ones. And this here used to be the largest pest species that we had in cotton. This is the um, Helicoverpa. And you can see here, he's having a great big uh, munch on the cotton bowl. So the cotton bowl is like the fruit of the cotton plant. 
and he used to do lots and lots of damage in our crops but we're very lucky as I mentioned earlier we have three gene genetically engineered cotton so we've got these built-in proteins in the plant that protect us from that particular species so only the lepidoptera which are the um the caterpillars and when they feed on this guy um, now with these genes, he gets a great big belly ache and his stomach turns to mush and he basically can't feed anymore because his belly ache hurts way too much. And this little fellow here, we generally see, this is a two spotted mite. We only usually see them at the end of the season and it's really important to protect all the beneficials right through to the end of the crop when it's nearly time for the cotton to be open because these ones here can actually excrete what's called a honeydew and it can contaminate the cotton. Um, it puts a sticky um, substance, almost like a honey, um, across the cotton fibres. And when the spinning and weaving guys go to, to turn it into yarn and there's honey, sticky honeydew, it clogs up all their machine and it makes it much harder to dye. So we really want to protect our plants from these ones. So this is what it looks like towards the end of the season. It takes that 140 days to get to this point. And after it's finished flowering and fruiting, the, the bowls actually open up and we have the fibre inside the bowls. I'm just going to run this little video for you. So that there is called a cotton picker. It's a mechanical harvester. So many years ago, and my dad told me he did this a long time ago, they used to pick cotton by hand. And in some countries overseas, they still do. But here in Australia, we're very lucky. We get to use these great big machines. And there's lots of um, women and girls or like young teenage, uh, sort of teenage girls who now get to operate all the different machinery on our farm. Um, and it's not, farming is not just for men anymore. There's lots of um, women that are getting into farming. So this is my, one of my roles on the farm is to drive the cotton picker each season. And I'm really looking forward to getting back on it, um, hopefully in June next year. Oh, I'll go back to one slide. So I was going to mention, um, yeah, you know, I said to you earlier, I had uh, one fellow that works on the farm, but I often need some extra help during the season with irrigation. And it's a really good job for school kids to come and do. They get paid lots of money to work on their university holidays or their school holidays during the summer period. Um, they can come and work for a couple of hours in the morning and then a couple of hours in the afternoon and do some irrigation. Yeah, I'll just... Um, Stop sharing that. Thank you so much, Renee, for that presentation. That was really, really awesome and really, really interesting. I was wondering whether you would be interested in answering some questions that we have for you today. Yeah, I would love to answer some of your questions. Um, well, the first question is, aside from cotton, what other yes. kinds of crops do you grow and do they complement each other in, in your farm? Yep, absolutely. So some of the other crops are mung beans, popcorn, chickpeas and wheat. So wheat is a, a grain crop and the mung beans and the chickpeas are really important rotational crops because they're what we call pulses. So they're able to biologically fix nitrogen from the air. And that there's a bonus with that. It means we don't need to add on extra fertilizer, which means we're reducing our emissions um, by not having extra fertilizer on our, on our field. They've also got a very different root system. So cotton has a really large tap root. Um, wheat has a really fibrous type of root and um, the pulses are shallow rooted but fibrous as well. So having that different root system is really important in the, the soil. I'm very lucky I'm on black self-mulching cracking clays or what they could call vertisols. But having a different root system means that if there is potential risks for things like diseases, having a rotation of multiple different crops 
is important to break up that insect cycle or that disease cycle that you could potentially be exposed to. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have another question here and it is, I guess most people would be wondering, can we grow cotton in our backyard? And I live in Victoria where it's a bit cooler than where you are. And can I grow cotton there? Well, you certainly can. So Jenny, um, Jenny Hughes, our education officer at Cotton Australia, has some little bags of conventional cotton seed. So if, you, if your school gives them a call um, or if your mum and dad puts in um, a little request via the website at cottonaustralia.com.au, you can actually get a little bag of seed. It will teach you how to grow them and when's a really good time to plant. So in the cooler regions, so we do have some growers down in Victoria. Um, they're in the northern part of Victoria, so it's they really need to have a nice warm soil. So above 14 degrees is really important. Um, and But you can grow them in a pot plant and they will continue to flower and put balls on throughout the whole summer period. And then you will see fluffy white cotton by Easter the following year if you plant them in, say, September, oh, which is very... really exciting to see in your backyard. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Very inspiring. My last question here is, what is your favourite thing about being a farmer? Like you sound like you're invested in all, like looking at the, the disease and pest management and you also drive the picker and you have lots of different things going on. But what's your favourite part? I would say the the best part about being a farmer is being exposed to lots of different research and new technology. So ag tech's really important on the farm. And we use a lot of technology to grow the crop, to measure the water inputs, to look at the, the soil temperature, to look at the leaf, um, the leaf temperature as well. There's so much that comes into play with that. So not only the technology, um, our tractors now steer and drive themselves pretty much. So we sit in there to monitor to make sure that the, everything's running smoothly. But they're all GPS, so they connect to the satellites. Um, so, that, yeah, there's lots of really cool technology on farm. The other thing that I really love is it's different every single day. So some days you're irrigating, some days you might be out on the tractor, other times you're attending a meeting with all the other farmers in the valley to learn about the new research or to learn about other things that are happening within the district, mm -hmm. um, making sure that we're across what insects may be coming into our area in case there's other, you know, sometimes we've had exotic species move into the country. So learning about those and connecting with other farmers. It's it's very different every single day. So you never get bored doing what you do when you're a farmer. Well, thank you very much. That was a really interesting presentation. Um, and I learned a real lot about all the sorts of things to do with cotton farming. Um, I appreciate your time so much, Renee, and thank you very much for that. And thanks to everybody who was joining us for this Farmer Time session. If you'd like to see more, please visit the Produce It, Protect It website. But thank you very much.